Hi, I'm Renata Wetterman. I'm a junior from Baker College here at Rice, um, and I'm one of the communications and marketing chairs for N7. What neglected tropical disease, or NTD, did you get and how? Um, so this past summer I was living in Malawi, which is a country in the more southern part of Africa. Um, and while I was there, I contracted schistosomiasis, or snail fever. And the way that you get that is by being in a fresh water source that has a lot of snails living in it, and those snails have parasites that will go and actually infect your liver and other parts of the body. Um, so while I got it from swimming in a freshwater lake, a lot of people there will get it from drinking water or from washing clothes. A lot of people send their kids to wash clothes in the river by our village. What are the symptoms that you faced? Um, so a lot of the symptoms associated with schistosomiasis, uh, somewhere between six and eight weeks after you've been infected, um, you'll experience really painful like abdominal pain um, and bleeding, like painful like blood in the urine and feces. Um, and then in a lot of kids who we'd see because I was working at a hospital, um, they'd come in with really like distended stomachs and actually if you have like a chronic infection, it can cause scarring in your liver and issues with your urinary tract. What did you hear about Schisto from the community and from fellow foreigners? So there's actually like a big discrepancy between what people who were living in the community um, in the village of Malawi thought and then between others. Um, so a lot of the villagers, when I talked to them about how I thought I might have Schisto, um, they said, oh, like, well, we don't get that here um, because we've been living here for so long that we're immune to it, which is false. You can't be immune to it. It's a parasite. Um, and a lot of people also thought that the, like a lot of people didn't think that you could necessarily get treatment for it. And there was a lot of confusion when I came in and said, okay, like I think that I've been exposed to this parasite. I need the prophylaxis for it. Um, and they said, like there were a lot of conflicting opinions about what medication to give in what dosage and like at what time after um, you had possibly been exposed. Um, and then contrasting that to the expat community, there was a lot of knowledge that as soon as you go in these certain locations, if you're swimming in fresh water, um, then there's a very high likelihood that you're going to contract snail fever. What's the course of treatment for schisto? Um, so one of the interesting things about schistosomiasis is that you can't really, like there's no prophylaxis you can take before you would be exposed to it. Um, so what happens instead is you have to wait six to eight weeks, which is the um, incubation period for the parasite. And after like it lays eggs and hatches, um, then you can kill those using a dose of medication that costs... I think in American money, it was less than 75 cents for me, and it's based on weight. So a lot of the people who are exposed to this are children who are much smaller and therefore would need a smaller dose. Um, and so essentially you just take two courses of treatment, six weeks and 12 weeks after you're exposed. If treatment for schisto and other NTDs are, is so widely available and inexpensive, why don't more people have access to this treatment? Um, well, I think that like you said, it's kind of a big issue of access. So um, even though these drugs are available for very inexpensive prices, um, I think a course of treatment for a child that can inoculate them against seven diseases that could possibly impact them is only 50 cents a year. Um, however, like actually getting it to the communities and kind of what I was talking about with people who were unsure of how the treatment should work, like getting a community-based initiative that really informs them about the risks and how to treat these diseases is really important. And so that's actually the goal of N7 here at Rice. Um, and we work on a lot of really great things involving advocacy for neglected tropical diseases and raising awareness and getting sort of national attention and policy focused on it, um, for raising funds to help fight these diseases worldwide, um, and then for doing things like these that just make people a little better informed. So that's actually why I decided to get involved in N7, is after seeing these diseases and experiencing them firsthand, um, I think that we can, like it's very clear that we can fight them if we just have a community that's willing to go out and make it happen.